Welcome back to the New York Jets franchise, everyone. The Jets are on the road this week in Lucas Oil Stadium to face the Indianapolis Colts. Indy is sitting at 5-2 right now and are having a pretty good first half of the season. Not bad considering that Andrew Luck, now in his 13th season with the Colts, has spent five of those games injured with a torn shoulder. Well, the non-throwing arm, anyway. Uh, this is his first game back in action, so we'll have to see how the vet has bounced back from his injury. They have Marlon Mack toting the rock, but the offensive attack has been overwhelmingly a passing threat this season. T.Y. Hilton has fallen off the pace a bit and is no longer their first string wideout, falling to number four on the depth chart. Their number one draft choice has taken the first place in the lineup and seems to be a very good fit for the Colts. The defense comes in at number 12 in the league with the strength in the middle of the field, so I would think that will be a slight departure from the last couple of games for the passing attack. If all goes as planned though, the running game should be able to find some room against a D-line that seems to be in a rebuilding phase. And the Jets corral the Colts. Let's find out as the New York Jets tangle with the Indianapolis Colts here on the Football Freaks Sports Network. T.Y. Hilton has taken over the return duties. And he's back deep in the end zone. Comes out, out to the 20 and to the 25. And he is gang tackled there. Andrew Luck bringing the offense on the field. As I said, he missed the last five games, so his touchdown and interception ratio is good, but it is very, very low. Mack back deep for the Colts. Fake handoff, and it's incomplete batted away by Demarcus Faulkner. And that brings up second down and also the starting lineup for the Colts offense. There you see number 19, Edwin Brown, who is the rookie that has taken the top spot in the lineup. And Mack gets a couple out to the 26. So third and eight, back goes Luck, and it's complete to Funches. Tackled at the 48-yard line of the Jets, a 26-yard reception. And the Colts are in business. Mack gets the call, breaks the tackle of Jerron Mason, but finally gets tackled by Adams. Second and five. And Luck calls his own number inside the 35 to the 34, and a first down for the Colts. Luck taking some chances here after coming off injury. A high snap, and it's... Corey Miller taking it to the 30-yard line. Second and six, the pass downfield and complete at the 15-yard line to Robbie Anderson. The former Jet makes good on that catch and Mack gets tackled by Blake Cashman at the 13-yard line. So third and eight, the pass goes out to Miller and he is tackled by Cashman again at the eight yard line. So fourth and three, Austin Cyber puts through a 25 yard field goal and Indianapolis goes up three to nothing. Now, Darnold and company, the handoff to Jackson out to the 29. A five yard pickup for the running game. Now again, Jackson, first down, out to the right. He's in the open and steps out of bounds at the 50-yard line. What a start for this running attack. Jackson able to find lots of room on the outside. Darnold, back to pass, throws over the middle, complete. Rig Howard brings it down at the 39-yard line for a first down. And second and 10. Pass again goes to Howard, breaks a tackle, and is inside the 15 to the 12. And 18 yards after the catch. 
Jacobs takes it inside the 15. Uh-oh, John Ross is down. But he's on the sideline, looks to be okay. And we'll find out if he gets back in the game real quick. Darnold, back to pass, completes it to Howard, and he's in there for the score. Howard is fast, becoming Darnold's favorite target. And that one he catches over the middle and into the end zone. The Jets moving the ball 69 yards on eight plays for the go-ahead score. The Jets now lead it seven to three. And Andrew Luck and the Colts trying to respond here. Pass complete to Brown, and he has a first down out to the 39-yard line. That brings us to the end of quarter number one with your score seven to three. If you look on the right side of the Jets defensive line, they put Raymond Rivers, the rookie, in the rotation. So we'll be seeing some of him. And over the middle to Marlon back. He is out in the open down to the 34-yard line. Now third and seven. The pass complete. Out to Moreau and he's out of bounds at the 28. That brings up fourth and five. And also brings out Seibert for a 45-yard kick, and it is good. The score is now seven to six. And after a three and out by the Jets, the Colts have it again. Mack up the middle to the 44-yard line. Third and one. The pass is complete to Moreau, breaks the tackle, and is down to the 49, but driven back. Cade Hoffman is down for the Jets, and he is on the sideline, so we can only hope that he will be okay. Matt is stopped by Robert Ramirez in the backfield for a yard loss. Ramirez coming on a safety blitz. Mack has room and has a first down to the 37-yard line of the Jets. The pass this time goes to Anderson over the top of Brian Poole and complete at the 33. That brings us to the two-minute warning. Second and six. All day to throw it. Luck finally throws it to Moreau, and he does not get the first down. So third and two over the middle. Moreau again, and he has a first down this time to the 20-yard line, and the Colts are now in the red zone. Luck back to pass, lets it go, and Robbie Anderson catches it. Tackled. Finally at the seven yard line and the Colts have it first and goal. Moreau with the catch over the middle and he's tackled at the three. On third and goal, Mack is taken down in the backfield by Blake Cashman. That'll bring up fourth down and bring out Austin Seibert and he puts it through, puts the Colts on top nine to seven and that will take us into halftime here in Indianapolis after that brilliant first drive the Jets are now sputtering now with a halftime report let's go to Eurocat baby we seem to be having a defensive battle here in Indy with the Colts getting the upper hand here at halftime nine to seven there's been a number of bumps and bruises tended to on the sideline for both teams, but overall, we haven't had any big injuries yet. In other news, a game that Jets fans will be paying close attention to is the matchup of their opponent next week. The Titans today playing the Dolphins, which sees Miami leading into the half 14-7. Marcus Mariota has only been able to throw for 34 yards so far, and if the Titans are going to make a game of it, he may have to put up better numbers in the second half. Meanwhile, here in Indy, Sam Darnold is having the same issue. 
He needs to have a much better second half if the Jets are going to walk off the field with another win. New York has shaken up the O-line in order to make a difference in their blocking schemes, but that hasn't been making a huge impact so far. Will the rest of the game bring any more adjustments from either team? To find out, stay with us as we start the second half of play in a moment. Welcome back everyone to Lucas Oil Stadium here in Indianapolis. The Jets are behind on the scoreboard and they're finding the Colts a very formidable opponent to have to deal with. They've been outplayed in every phase of the game offensively. The defense is trying to keep Andrew Luck and company under control, but can that be kept up well enough for the offense to put some more points on the board? Let's find out as the second half gets underway. The Jets with a nice opening drive here in the second half could take the lead back. Donald is sacked. Back at the 11-yard line, Francisco Porter with the damage is done, and it's second and 15. Out of the shotgun, Darnold throws over the middle, complete to Jackson. He's got the first down all the way out to the 33-yard line. Darnold back to pass again, steps out of the pocket and is taken down by Darius Leonard at the 22. That is an 11 yard loss. And Darnold back to pass again. And it's caught for a first down. Oh, ooh, no, it's third and inches and Jackson picks it up. No problem all the way to the 48 yard line of the Colts. Handoff goes to Jackson again, tries to bounce it outside and gets minimal yardage. Now third and six. Pass is intercepted. Clifton Bennett grabs it out of the air and is tackled at the 42, but not before he gives the ball back to the Colts and in pretty good field position, I might add. Now on second and eight, Luck with the fake handoff and it's complete out to Anderson and he has a first down all the way down to the 24 before Adams can take him down. Now Luck drops back again, throws over the middle, complete Robbie Anderson down to the two I thought for sure he might cough that up because he was hit hard. And into the end zone, touchdown, Edwin Brown. Just a simple slant pattern, but the rookie shows how open he can get, leaving Julian Love completely baffled as to where he was going on the play. And that takes it to 16 to seven for the Colts. After a three and out from the Jets, Luck scrambling around in the pocket and finally taken down. Rookie Robert Williams taking him down at the 42 yard line. A three yard loss on the play and that will bring up second and 13. The pass is over the middle complete. Moreau catches it on the left hash marks doesn't have the first down, but that brings us to the end of quarter number three. Now third and five from the 50 yard line. The pass complete to Mack, but Rivers tackles him short of the first down. So Dalton is back to pass, evades a tackle and completes it out to Howard for a nine yard pickup. Third and one. The pass complete to John Ross for the first down out to the 40-yard line. Donald back to pass again, throws complete to Terry McLaurin over the middle, and that's a seven-yard pickup. Donald back to pass again, throws it complete to Ross to the 40-yard line, and Donald is doing an awful lot of passing again. 
And over the middle complete to Jackson. He has the first down. Tackled at the 28. Now second and eight and down goes Darnold. Porter gets to him again at the 33 yard line, bringing up third and 15 now. The pass is intercepted. Fourth year safety out of Tennessee, Solomon Rose makes the interception and it's all the way back to the 37 yard line, giving the Colts excellent field position again. Darnold trying to complete that in a pretty tight window to Howard and all Rose did was step in front and he had the interception. May takes down Mack in the backfield for a three yard loss and that brings up third and 10 but it also brings us to the two minute warning with the Colts in front 16 to seven. They have the ball and Mack up the middle, first down to the 45 yard line of the Jets. A minute and 43 seconds left and I would imagine that the Colts are gonna bleed the clock on this. And Mack goes up the middle, stopped. The Jets now out of timeouts, cannot stop the clock. But with just over a minute left. The kick is down at the five yard line. Not giving the Jets very much room to work with. The throw is over the head of Howard and incomplete. Darnold from the goal line throws to Howard and it is over his head as well. Now on third and 10, just barely gets that one off and Howard can't hang on to it. Shazier knocking it out of his hands. Fourth and 10 from the goal line and John Ross catches the ball inside Colt territory at the 45, but there's only 14 seconds left. Down goes Darnold. Porter with his third sack of the afternoon, and that is all. 16 to seven is your final score here from Indianapolis. Now, as you can see from the stats of the game, this turned out to be a defensive ball game. Unfortunately, the Colts came out on top in this one. Although Luck had a very impressive 86% completion average, neither team did an outstanding job in getting the ball down the field. The Jets offense just didn't seem to be able to get out of the shadow of Darnold's interception issues. They're less than 200 yards of offense and only seven points on the board is pretty telling about the offense's lack of being able to move the ball down the field. Between Jackson and Jacobs, there were only 13 carries, and that just isn't enough. If the Jets want to establish themselves as a running powerhouse and run the pass off its success, there needs to be way more carries than that. When it does come to the passing game, Donald has definitely turned his focus away from the valuable use of the tight end position. Not one completion to any New York tight end is pretty much forgetting about that asset. Darnold seemed to be falling into his pattern of dropping back too far right out of the pocket protection area, which led to a couple of key indie sacks. Remembering that a short drop and getting rid of the ball in a hurry should be the goal for, for him anyway. In his case, Waiting the, for the play to develop down the field should be his secondary option. The defense, however, was able to hold the Colts to only 16 points on the board. And if the offense would have been on track, New York could have walked off the field with a win. If you take a look at both tackles and tackles for loss, the Jets were pretty dominant in those categories. When it came to the number of sacks, each team had though. 
it was clear that Donald himself was the cause of the Jets' side of the issue. As was mentioned before, if he stayed in the pocket, the Colt defense just didn't get to him. Something that will have to be rectified if the Jets are going to be a contender for this season's playoffs. We're just about halfway through our season and the Jets are just one notch over 500 ball and that most likely won't get them in the postseason. A number of upgrades resulted from this game. The offense benefits from center Joey Sanders boosting to an 86 overall. Rig Howard getting a deep threat upgrade that also benefits his catch in traffic and release attributes. In the D-line, we have left end Coco Sheffield getting a boost to 82 overall and even getting an increase in strength. So that time in the weight room is definitely paying off. Then we have rookie defensive tackle Robert Williams seeing a boost to his power rusher skills and getting to a 77 overall. In the linebacker lineup, Blake Cashman earns a run stopper upgrade and is now an 80 overall. That rise in talent levels will be needed because the Jets' next challenge will be back home in MetLife to face the Tennessee Titans. Now the Titans are a team that come in with the number 10 offense in the league and despite their 3-4 record, could prove more than enough for the Jets to handle. Again, the Jets secondary will be challenged since the passing attack with Marcus Mariota hurling the ball is the dominant part of their game. The defensive secondary looks to be a pretty talented group, so the running game of the Jets will definitely have to find some rooms. And that might be difficult as well, because they are a very talented group too. Well, that's going to do it for this week's episode of the New York Jets franchise here on the Football Freaks Sports Network. The New York defense did its job today, but the offense just didn't match their performance. This will be a Monday night game in prime time, so a solid performance will be needed to, number one, take down the Titans, and number two, get back on the winning train. In order to do that, I feel that New York must utilize the run, and that means pushing this talented Tennessee D-line off the ball. Not an easy task, but one that will need to be a focus in this week's training. Can the Jets get it done? To find out, be with us for the Jets and the Titans from MetLife Stadium. Until then, for Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now, and have a good day, everyone. <laughs>